हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल सो आई हैव कवर्ड ऑल द टॉपिक्स इन दिस चैप्टर मेटल्स एंड नॉन मेटल्स सो टुडे इट इज द लास्ट टॉपिक व्हिच इज रिमेनिंग दैट इज कोरोजन सो लेट्स डिस्कस ऑन दिस टॉपिक ऑफ कोरोजन सो दिस इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक टू अंडरस्टैंड so before i start with this topic i like to give a uh, small little examples for you all to understand this so if you have observed or noticed the gates the gates in your school are painted so what is the reason that these gates are painted also if you observe in your classrooms the window grills they are painted so what is the reason that these uh, metals are painted it's because they get corroded so iron iron gates uh, the window grills are made out of iron they get rusted so let us understand this word rusted rusting is a process where the outer the metal gets degraded so if you observe there is a brownish reddish uh, flaky kind of uh, substance on the outer surface of a metal suppose this is the iron iron metal you can see outer there is a reddish brown reddish brown flaky substance this is called rusting so the reason that the window grills or the gates of your school or a compound uh, these iron gates are painted it's because of to avoid the rusting so it's a protective layer on the iron to prevent it or decrease the time of degeneration so children uh science is all about asking the question why it is all about reasoning it is not only theory in your textbooks but it is correlating the theory with the practical applications so observe uh, things around you and try to correlate the chemistry with your practical life so another observation that you all should make is silver so silver either articles that you all use in your house show pieces um or ornaments when you buy it new they are very shiny they are very lustrous and in course of time these silver ornaments they get a blackish tinge on it a blackish uh, coating it looks very dull not shiny so the reason is because this silver it reacts with the sulfide in the environment in the air and it forms silver sulfide so also with copper copper vessels or uh, any articles any show pieces that you'll come across copper when it's new it's very shiny and uh, after some days or months it gets a greenish tinge on it blackish tinge it looks very dull um and not lustrous so the reason is because it reacts with moist carbon dioxide in the environment and it forms copper carbonate so metals react with elements or compounds in the environment and they get corroded so let us understand uh, what is this uh, rusting of iron with a small example so take three test tubes and we'll place iron nail in each of the test tube so this is an iron nail in the first test tube a we will add water in this normal tap water and we'll close it with a cork 
in test tube b we will add distilled water so distilled water is to uh, boiled and distilled to uh, eliminate the air present in the water so we will add distilled water in test tube b and we will mix oil in this test tube so oil and water are two immiscible uh, solvents so they don't mix with each other oil floats on top so this is just to uh, avoid any air coming in contact with the iron nail so this is oil mixed in and this is distilled water so in the third test tube we will add anhydrous anhydrous calcium chloride and we will add the nail both all the three test tubes will be closed to avoid any moisture or air coming in contact with the iron nails so this is a drying agent so in this three test tubes in test tube 1 the iron nail is in contact with water normal water tap water and in the test tube b the iron nail is in contact with uh, distilled water so there is no contact of air there is only water present in the test tube b uh, the oil present just uh, avoids eliminates the air from coming in contact with the iron nail in test tube c the iron nail uh, anhydrous calcium chloride is added to absorb the extra moisture present in the test tube so it is completely in contact with air so among these three you can clearly understand the difference in the three test tubes and uh, the result is uh, rusting happens to only test tube a so the reason is the iron nail gets rusted because it is in contact with water and air so there is air present also uh, above uh, the water and also present in the dissolved state in the water so in the second test tube the iron nail is in contact only with water no air and in the third test tube the iron nail is in contact with only air so it can clearly be understood that for the iron nail to get rusted it should have water and air so these are the factors also i will state some examples so a small observation that you all can make is the vehicles near coastal area so the vehicles near coastal area get corroded very quickly so what is the reason behind it the vehicles two wheelers cars if you observe that they get rusted very quickly so the reason why i give this simple examples is uh, because for you all to understand this concept much better so when small simple examples are stated you all can remember this and correlate your chemistry with practical application so vehicles of coastal area get corroded rusted much faster much quicker than the vehicles in other region so the reason is because there is presence of moisture moisture in the air so these two factors more moisture and also presence of other elements in the air so these vehicles get corroded rusted very quickly so this corrosion is a very serious uh, problem faced uh, by industries and also in practical life practical application um there's lot of loss 
happening worldwide every year because of this corrosion of metals so in industries also faced and also in construction work so there are many uh, like uh, automobile automobile industries facing corrosion of uh, their metal components also construction so construction of buildings there are metal uh, structures that are being used and also which includes bridges which is a big matter of concern in building of bridges construction work lot of corrosion happening in this sectors and uh, in industries so there are many preventive methods that can be um done to prevent this corrosion so one of the method is electroplating um you all will study this in other chapters what is electroplating there are many methods used like um electroplating anodizing so to protect the metal from the outer environment these processes like electroplating anodizing are done where there's a metal layer uh, that is coated on the metal another metal is coated on the metal and that's how the metal gets protected so electroplating anodizing also greasing oiling and uh, also alloys so greasing and oiling you will observe this in your vehicles in automobile industries and many other applications also where greasing and oiling is used which provides a protective uh, layer on the metal and it uh, decreases the degeneration of the metal and increases the life of the metal so by these different uh, processes that uh, the metal undergoes or can be used preventive methods for the metal uh, we can decrease the loss so alloys are nothing but uh, the homogeneous mixture of two metals two different metals or also a metal and a non metal and uh, alloys have different properties from their original pure metal like for example let us consider gold so gold in its pure state is 24 carat gold and uh, 24 carat gold is very soft it's in its pure form so to make ornaments uh, the goldsmith doesn't use 24 carat but they use 22 carat gold so the reason is because um, it becomes hard and so it's very easy to make an ornament so gold is either mixed with uh, copper or silver to make it 22 carat so that would be a, a alloy a mixture so gold 22 carat is mixed with either silver or copper which means that there are 22 parts of gold and two parts of the other metal that is used to dilute it and uh, in the pure form it is 24 parts of gold so alloying is a very good uh, preventive method and also um, alloys have very good properties uh for the specific purpose that they are used for like brass is an alloy so it's an alloy of copper and zinc also bronze is an alloy and it's a mixture homogeneous mixture of copper and tin so these alloys have lower melting point 
and also lower conductivity as compared to their pure metal components so if you have observed copper uh, is used for making electrical wires because it's a good conductor of electricity and also heat but brass and bronze are not good conductors of uh, electricity so copper is used in making of wires also if you have heard of another alloy which has its application in soldering is soda which is an alloy of lead and tin so this has a low melting point and thus it is used in welding so depending on the metals that are used they have their different unique properties so there are a lot of benefits of using alloys um they have different properties in comparison with their pure metal components so another example is uh plates that you eat your food spoons or the vessels that are used in the kitchen are made out of alloy so alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals um in stainless steel these are made out of stainless steel so stainless steel is uh, an alloy of iron nickel and chromium so they have their unique properties and benefits so pure iron is not used because it's um very soft and also it stretches with heat so it is mixed with carbon that is 0.05 percentage and iron products are made so there are lot of benefits of mixing two metals and making products so by this i hope you have understood this concept this topic of corrosion it's very simple to understand so by this i've concluded the chapter of metals and non metals um so if you'll have any doubts or queries then uh, don't forget to drop your comments below and i'll try to reply to you all at the earliest also if you all have any suggestions then do drop your suggestions down below and uh, i'll take your recommendations and uh, i'll see you all in my next topic in science